Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Free Play Fridays here on Pastiche of Skin. Yes, we're going to try something a little bit different. What normally would be a first 15, today we're doing for Free Play Friday. Free Play Friday means that it's a game that's free to play, and this one we're looking at is Prominence Poker on the PlayStation Network. Prominence Poker has arrived with very little fanfare to the American PSN network. It's one of those games that just pops up into the list and of course I download, I play, I give a try. I've played a lot of poker sims over the years, uh, mostly because I'm absolutely garbage at poker and I want to learn how to get better. So this is a Texas Hold'em style poker table game. It's uh, got a customizable gender and character creator. I just went for a bit of a randomization and then took a wee gander around to see how I could actually manipulate and change it. There is a few basic body types, there is a number of hairstyles, uh, some basic cosmetics and design to the face, either doing facial hair, no facial hair and that sort of thing. There is a little bit of a repetition whenever it comes to hairstyles and stuff. I think maybe partially because this game is only just out, or also the fact the game doesn't really care what you look like as long as you kind of find something that almost fits for yourself as you work around the table. I mean, even as I'm going through here, I'm looking at hairstyles going like, yeah, I like that one, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. It covers all the basic bases. It has long hair, short hair, no hair. It'll cover for at least uh, everybody in a most generic pattern. In my own case, whenever I took a wee flick through this, I found out myself a sexy little pixie haircut, and that was the way I was going to go. As you may notice, I do play as female characters in everything I play, so... Uh, I'm not too concerned about making them look like me, but I could have very easily done so if I chose to do the option, which a lot of people kind of want to identify with. So... There's a bit of an issue with the customization system, not really in this bit here, but along with the costumes and clothing and naming, which I will probably talk about whenever we get to it in a short while. But as it is now, you're just watching me fill out my girl, make sure that she's got the right hair, the right look, the right color. I felt like they should go with someone with a little bit of a sky blue. There it is. Hmm. Aquamarine. Does she look pretty? So yeah, once you actually get done and dusted with doing your basic character creation, calling yourself the tourist, because you don't really have any other option, the reason why is because the underground mode has a tutorial to show you. The underground mode is the single player campaign mode that's kind of like backed onto the multiplayer, shows you a number of locations, and you work your way up through with your own style. So I'm going to let this talk for itself because it is actually a pretty badass intro it gives for itself, so in a second. Are you all ready to win big? Then come on down and get ready to have a ball in prominence. Bloody brilliant, that flick. Lured this city more fish than I could ever dream. Started pouring in by the busload, they did. Rookies, amateurs, tourists. All looking for their own slice of the prominence pudding. Losing their life savings in all a flutter. Very few of these punters ever make it out without their purse getting pilfered. Marks, they are. You're having a laugh, ain't ya? Oi, oi! That's me, pride still intact. The largest hit to my reputation came from one of these chances. Went by the moniker, The Tourist. Well, at least that's what I called her. You can see why. She earned that name by taking me down in a marathon tourney. Looking like a damn crockle. <laughs> the last three hands were bloody brutal. There we were, just the two of us left. A damn close to the same stack. My whole cards were complete rubbish. The tourists seemed pleased with theirs. As a basic introduction to the mechanics of the poker game, this is actually really well done. Personally, um, a lot of times I find that they just kind of have a very basic outlook. They don't really care about making the arena look that interesting. After playing games like Poker Night at the Inventory, that there's something like actually about having an aesthetic of actually being involved in the poker table and in the players around you. And as simple as this is, like this could very easily be translated from a tablet with the visual cues, the simple touch control system, which has been just translated reasonably well to the actual analog sticks. This is a reasonably decent way of actually displaying poker quite intuitively, while well, not really kind of uh, making any changes, you know? It, it's simple and effective. And this dude, the mayor, is actually entertaining to listen to, so I'll let you go back to listen to that for just a minute. As I, It works its way through the basic mechanics of the system, from everything of calling, betting, raising, folding, and even peeking at your cards, which also kind of also doubles into something that you can see used tactically in the multiplayer game. 
She just checked. Cool as a bloody cucumber. I bet the minimum to see if she'd go spare. The tourist raised 2,000 for my trouble. Not a standard fish move, that. I called to save myself the embarrassment. River came up. Seven of diamonds. The tourist bet me 5,000. Musically, there actually is a pretty interesting kind of like slight snatch or lock, stock, and two smoking barrels effect to the actual game soundtrack. I find it personally very entertaining. I dropped my straight flush. Born and he didn't even bat an eye. It's poor form, I know, but something made me ask, what are you at? Bugger had a pair of ladies. Full boat since the turn. Royally bad with mate. Feeling cheeky, I ordered her a bevy to match her clobber. The kind of shandy that would fetch a local bloke a real paste in. Next hand, and it's the same song and dance. Taurus called the big blind. I checked, and the flop was out. And then I caught it. A bit of fire in those eyes. I mean, this game does assume that you have some basic familiarity with the rules of Texas Hold'em and the hands that are actually available to you. Now, the character, the mayor, does throw out some random phrasing, which uh, is stuff that, like, poker terms that I'm not too aware of. But, of course, you can always check what hand rankings are, so if you're an absolute, absolute beginner, you will learn along the way. I checked, and she bet me double the blind. I called, naturally. Turn came. Jack of clubs. There was that fire again. The tourists wanted to punt so bad I could taste it. And me holding bugger all. I bet a thousand to run a mock. Then that fishbowl up and doubled it. I wasn't about to be tugged round by a bird in a bleeding bum bag. Not that day, not any day, mate. I re-raised to four thousand. No faffing about, this loony up and raised me twenty-four grand. I folded. Nutter had gone and lost the plot. All the same, the bluff had gone too far. Couldn't believe I was being bullied by a bleeding tourist. Then, Bumbag looked up at me. The emote system that's actually built into this is a little more than really a taunt system, but I also find it really useful whenever you're playing to kind of fill in the gap between rounds while you're waiting, and just to have basic communication non-verbally with the people around you. It works reasonably well, and also the animation is quite smooth and slick, so it just adds another little thing to the game. Ah, huh. uh, the stones on this one. It was the start of the last hand. Dealer threw me a wicked set of diamonds. Straight away, I tossed a bet of 5,000. The tourist took a long sip of that bloody tourist. Now, pretty much poker to me is always about those all in showdowns, can always go really well or go really badly. But the fact that they use little visual cues, little touches like the Guy Ritchie kind of like cut in whenever it's pulled, pulled off. These are little things that make this game just stand out above other little poker sims that I've been playing over the years. Flips over a suited slap shot. I've slapped down my Ajax. Dealer through the flop. King, nine of clubs, and a ten of spades. I'm a lady away from a straight. Tourist, a clover from a flush. The look on her face was priceless. Turn came out. Hit my straight with a queen of arts. Ha! Bloody brilliant. Before my smirk turned into a smile, blasted dealer flipped over the river. That dodgy nutter landed their flush with a bloody five of clubs. Ah, oh, took a pasting from a tourist in a bleeding bum bag. I tell the cheeky bin that if she has a knackers for a rematch, she'll have to earn enough rep to reach the tip of the tower, and I'll be waiting there. I toss her my bloody card and aim her at the cleaners. After finally completing the tutorial 
match, I suppose is the way to say it. It was only three hands, not really a proper full playthrough. You get your basic game results, and you finally realize what the leveling system is in this game. It is a rep system that kind of gives you points for little actions and every single time you've interacted with during a match. So winning showdowns and betting on the blind and folding that up, doing a smart fold or whatever else, kind of covers all of the little actions and interactions to push your character's ranking up. Not directly related to winnings and not directly related to chip count, it's related to participation more than anything else, which will give you unlocks of certain items, which you can see flashing up one after another here. And I was highly excited whenever I saw this list going up because whenever going like unlocks, unlocks, yeah, that's great if you unlock all this stuff. Gives me a few customization options, gives me a few ideas of what I could actually do to make my character look a little bit more unique. I can get behind this all on board. Like the this must be like the very, very basic stuff because they're given so much of it at the beginning, they just want to have a nice diversity in their character base whenever they start off the game. Yeah. I was wrong. I was completely wrong. They have a different idea of what you should be doing for your clothing in this, and I could see that being the reason why so many people might skip this one out a wee bit. But it's nice of them to give me a boost for my rep for the first couple of days, but yeah. It wasn't very pleasant to find out what happens next. You do get actually ability to get a little bit of chips every single day as you level up. You since you get a cut in, you get a cut out of the uh, the cash that's been spent in the day. It's only related to your level and it's since just your daily allowance. So let's take a look into the shop and stash where I thought all my stash clothing I had already unlocked was going to be. And that's what perturbed me whenever I said the featured items was an item that I'd already gotten. Looking at that, just to actually have a cigarette on my table instead of a drink is going to cost me 15,000 chips. That's what this game is. It, the, all of the visual customization stuff is built into the in-game currency. The in-game currency is also what you use to play the game. So I'm, it, it puts me off a little bit. You do have the option to not purchase the clothing and you only rent it, which I imagine is only for like your current playthrough or your current mode day, and you'd have to change your clothes every single day after renting each one of them. Now you can see the levels go up pretty high. You can see it goes up to what. Uh, 310? Good God. There is a massive leveling gap that you have to work your way through as you're playing through this game. It's, and it applies to absolutely everything. Tattoos, glasses, all of the customization options are all completely and already controlled by your level for unlocking and then your money supply for actually being able to wear it, which is all right, I suppose. I mean, it would be nice to give us something basic to start off with. Even the King's and Queen's Casino or whatever they call it gives you a t-shirt to start off with or some basic kind of gear to kind of make yourself differentiated from everybody else around you. But yeah, this is Prominence Poker, guys. Uh, I'll probably show you a little bit of gameplay footage. I'm going to be playing it live on Twitch at some point during the week, so you'll be able to check that out. The it's free to play, so go and try it out for yourself and get an imagining or an idea of what prominence poker feels to you. If you already play poker online for real money, this won't be as interesting to you, but if you're the kind of person who dabbles and plays for just the experience of it, and you want to play on the console, then prominence poker is right there for you. Either that, or you can go and of course check out the King's Casino Club social circle thing that's actually on a video called social scene that i posted up a good long while ago make sure to check out the two of them compare them and get your own idea for yourself so this has been prominence poker guys thank you very much for watching there's a like button right there if you like it hit the button if you dislike it hit the button next to it and make sure to comment and ask me questions about it i will see you guys all in the next video Bye bye